don't worry too much about your audition numbers. Make sure you're well hydrated. So just make sure you're drinking like a full bottle of water once an hour. So every hour on the hour, just make sure you drink. Just chug a water bottle. I don't have any water bottles. What if the water fountain's broken or something? Well, if you can't find any water, it, it, it can be any liquid, I guess, as long as it's not caffeinated or something. Just make sure you drink up, all right? Got it. I'm not that disappointed that I got ensemble. I missed my audition because I was actually in the uh, hospital. How did I get in the hospital? I don't want to talk about that. Fiddler on a roof. Sounds crazy, no? But then I did the little mid-sized suburban town of Peoria, Illinois, you may say every one of us is a fiddler on the roof because Debbie chose that show. Oh man, it was a very good choice. I mean, really, I felt like we had the right cast to pull it off right now. I think that uh, that's one of those shows that you really have to have kind of the right people <laughs> um, in your... Uh, in your school to pull it off and timing worked out great. You know, I don't even remember why I chose it. Um, I think it was, we just had never done it. So we never really had the cast. To yeah, we to never really it. had the cast. And so um, it felt like the right time. We've had a lot of, a lot more guys involved lately. So it's easier to do some of those you know, full guy casts. We throughout our life try to keep our balance, but how do we do that? That, I can tell you in a word, PCS drama. So, um, I think Fiddler on the Roof is a pretty good show. I hope the Fiddler falls off the roof. I like this show a lot just because of all the little moving pieces that go into it, both between the cast and the crew. And like, I know we've all missed a lot of rehearsals and we all have our things outside of drama, but despite all of that, we all worked so hard to get this to be where it needs to be. Brady being hard at work and getting involved in so much stuff, he was involved for one month to, he was involved in another play called Thor, and he had to miss rehearsals for a whole month to do it. Don't screw up in there. You don't want people calling you Thor. God blunder. I've got this. Good luck. It's never going to happen. Bro, that was gotta be the best show I've ever seen. It was, Six out of ten. Oh, uh, Thor, God of Thunder. How about the Fiddler? Like those things they play in the the banquet halls, the Fiddler. So I play Yanta. Laser Wolf came to me and asked to ha marry Zydel, which is like a 40 year age difference. Well, that's just a given. Yeah, of course I agree with everything Laser Wolf has done. Uh, I don't know. Man's lonely. What can we say? He He's lonely. He needs a bride, you know? If it works, it works. He comes to the butcher shop and sees her and... I mean, uh, sure, there's a bit of an age discrepancy, but that's not the worst thing that could happen. He would, he had a lot of good money, you know? Uh, let's see. What else did he do? do? Uh, well, there was a bit with the, uh... I mean, there's a reason why people went missing. Huh. You know, it is what it is. There weren't many animals around, so we had to feed people one way or the other. Marriage is marriage. Cannibalism. Hi, my name is Brielle, and we are doing Fiddler on the Roof, and I think this is a great play because it displays, but, um, but you I guess, just the actuality of life, because this play more lives in reality than your classic fairy tale. Don't you know? Humans have a lot of good fat content. It doesn't exactly have a happy ending, but it still gives a really good moral of the story. You want it clear? Laser Wolf is butchering Russian soldier. You know, I think... Laser Wolf should have ended up with a uh, Zydel. They would have been a better match and, you know, Tail is his time, Beauty and the Beast. Ooh. My name is James Shunk. I'm playing the role of Perchik. Arranged marriage is good for everybody, like even the wife. Cause like, 
I hate my character, because number one, he's a godless commie. That's right, Perchik is a communist. Number two, there is no number two. Trick question. That's enough reason. I'm not having fun this show. Dude, okay. My, my biggest problem with drama is Josiah. So we have a newest member of our cast named Josiah, who is the uh, direct, assistant director's newborn child. And he's pretty rad. Dude, he cannot stop running his mouth. Every single time that Debbie says something that's politically incorrect, he's just there. He's just like, like bro, chill out. Debbie did not, never said that. Debbie did not mean that, okay? Chill. You're weak. No, you really you carry one hair, Brody? Come on. Honestly, I'm just here for the women. The amount of chairs you can carry, is it directly related to how many chicks you can pull? <laughs> what? That's, that's, it's true. As guardian tradition, the amount of chairs you carry is how much testosterone flows through your veins. One chair, ah, oh, you might as well be a woman. Two chairs. Uh, you're a little bit better than James. Well, I'll get him. Don't worry. Three chairs. They're getting up to Loki. Four chairs. You're the god of thunder. Once a week, Brady gives me vocal lessons, and today, after rehearsal. We're going to the ICC practice rooms. I can't wait. How do you even have access to these? Um, I take voice lessons here sometimes, so they're kind of good nicky. You know, I kind of sick. Yeah. All right. What do you want to work on first? Um, I mean, we can do agony. We can do. We can work on your own shook up audition. You know. Uh, what else is there? No, I have everything. Yes, yeah. yes, let's, let's get started on that. So, all right. So, I'm gonna want you, I'm gonna want you to like really, I just want you to scream for warm ups, just to start, just to scream, all you right, know? Right. Just get those chords, get those chords vibrating. Dude, what? It broke. It broke? It broke. The tip of the key's like, it's stuck in the lock. Are these like, how soundproof are these rooms? They're pretty soundproof. Alright, do you have, you have any internet? My phone's not, does not have I'm, any. I only got 2% left, man. Alright, well, call someone. Wait, Who, okay, I, I, do we know? I, I, I gotta respond to something first. No, bro, there's no way you're sending a snap right now. There's no way. There's no way, bro. 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 What? What do you think? The, the... Oh. It's dead. I can send it. Actually, email. You know, I, I might be able to, like, fit through the glass. I have my... <laughs> if we break the glass, I can, like... Bit Actually, what? I think my shoulders might be too wide. Who do we know? Okay, who do we know whose email address that we have that that has access to this building? Oh, I know someone. The man, the myth, the legend. Noah Smith, the short one, not the tall one. No way. You know, James and Brady have been missing for like a whole week now, you know? Um, do I miss them? Not really. Am I sad they're not here? Maybe a little bit? Uh, and would I give the kidnapper a hug for making things so much more peaceful around here? I've considered it a couple times. Yeah, James and Brady have been missing for a while. I hope James comes back. They make the show what it is, I think. 
I don't see them too often. Jacob's been doing a great job filling in for Bra Brady as the understudy of Vietka. I still do not know what the heck this show is supposed to be about. Also, Brody has been doing a great job filling in as the understudy for James. In order to method act for the role of Perchik understudy, I read the Communist Manifesto and honestly, asked some pretty good points. Hear me out here. The proletariat need to rise up against the bourgeoisie because the proletariat are the obvious good guys and the bourgeoisie are the bad guys. Obviously. Now replace the proletariat with the ensemble and replace the bourgeoisie with the lead roles. What do we have here? A revolution. There we go. Historically, it's never gone wrong. There's nothing that's going to go wrong with this. I, I can't see what's going to go wrong with this. So that's why I formed the Socialist Party of PCS Theater. Catchy. I know. I was having trouble getting people to join at first, but like, after a little bit, you got a couple of memberships. Alright, hear me out guys. <laughs> Communism. <laughs> the Socialist yes. Party of PCS Theater. I know, right? Glorious. Hold up, I'm moving up. I'm moving up. <laughs> so we, us, obviously, are the good guys. Them, the, the leads, those are obviously the bad guys. Obviously. I quite like Audrey, thank you. Uh, nobody asked for your opinion. And I that's why your, I don't need we need the Socialist Party of PCS Theater. Yes. I agree yes. on that. Socialism. We must go to war. I'm fine with James and Brody, out and Brody are conveni uh, conveniently gone. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. You know, I'm fine with the no Brady after We can poison the girls with Starbucks. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Good spice. Uh -huh. And we can overpower and beat up the three remaining ones. That was interesting. That, I don't think you can do that personally. So, so who's with me? Yeah! 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 Ah! I think this is a great idea, Brody. Thank I you. completely agree with you. Thank you. I think you'll find great success in your idea. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? I really do like Brody's idea. Like, these leads, they're taking all the time and space, and everyone is, like, always enjoying the leads, but then no one cares about the ensemble. Exactly. So I agree with Brody. We should assassinate all the leads. No, I don't think communism is okay. Brody, I don't know. Who gave him that idea? Honestly, I think what Brody was doing was, like, very... Like a terrible idea, and I think we'll never get anywhere. But I was just bored of the show, so yeah. How long do you think we've been in here? I don't know. I, what I don't get is like it's definitely been more than two days at this point. I was gonna say it's been more than a week. I wish we had a concept of time. Maybe if we just like start counting, you know, there's like 3,600. Okay. Seconds in an hour, right? All right, that's, that's a start. Yeah, so if we just keep, if, what, if we take turns counting, then we'll have a rough idea. How about you occupy your mind counting, and I'll think of ways to get out of here since I'm um, smarter than you. Which one of us thought that counting was a good idea to keep track of time? Dude, Nick, there's like this 10 foot stack of chairs in the band room. I need you to go get it. I Make sure it doesn't fall over, okay? Like 10 feet? Like 10 like feet, 10, 10 feet. feet. You know, like 10 over, feet. over your head 10 feet, because you're all right. tiny. I'm, go get it. Well, yeah, all right, gotcha. You got, 10 you got foot you. small stack of chairs, I can't miss it. Exactly, Bro's exactly. Grass. Bro's gonna miss it. I don't know, he's, it's, he's not gonna see it. But like, yeah, so anyways, the 10 feet stack of chairs is like 10 feet tall. It's, precarious stack of chairs has fallen. How many fingers am I holding? At least one. He's fine. Does my head still hurt? I hit my head? Honestly, I don't know. 
honestly, the show's going pretty great. I'm a daughter. I'm getting married to someone I don't want to get married to. Except I kind of like convinced my father to let me not get married to him and marry the love of my life. Instead. This show is a really cool show because not only does it have humor, but it also has joy and heartbreak. Make a match, make a make me a match. Find me a fine, catch me a catch. It's, it's really fun actually and so traditionally it's supposed to be like really happy and stuff but Debbie actually wanted to change it to where it's a very serious moment for all the girls mm -hmm. because like we have this fantasy of meeting our guy and our dream guy and thinking that the matchmaker will bring that but Zidal knows in reality that there's really like the men that she brings are not going to be your dream men. If I were a rich man? If I were. Yeah, oh, that that? If I... <laughs> oh my gosh. What the heck? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man, it's gone already. My role here is to come up with sets and backgrounds to tell a story with the cast and crew and do the best we can to, to put together something that's going to work uh, for the director. It'd be a pleasure to the audience. So, I hope you enjoy. Oh. Are those different pants than you had on yesterday? Yeah, I brought a change, you know. You brought a spare pair of pants, but not a phone charger? Listen, James, I can function in this world without a phone charger. I can't function in this world with dirty pants. You feel me? I do. I needed to poison the girls. So I got to thinking, what do all girls like? Me, but like other than me, Starbucks. Perfect. <laughs> What's your Starbucks order? Hmm. Good question, Brody. I think it's probably a grande white chocolate mocha iced. Uh, can you send me Abby Wren's and Merlot's Starbucks order? Yeah, sure. Good to know. Don't worry, it's not fatal. It, it'll just make them violently ill for the next few days. Here's your Starbucks orders. All of them? No. Oh. This one's Bren's. Oh. This one's Merlot's. This one's Abby's. This one? Yep. I've had a lot of time to spend playing this piano, and it's just... What? Uh, Noah! Noah! I'm here! Noah! I've come to your rescue! No way! No way! No way! Let's go! Get it out of here! Let's go! We have to go! We have to go, bro! We have to go! Oh crap! Dude, our cars got towed! Noah Smith, can you take us to the school? Okay, so you see that white Mustang right there? Yeah? It's right behind it. Oh. Alright, let's, <laughs> right, let's go. <laughs> I got shotgun. No, I got shotgun. Bye.
Fine, you get shotgun. Go, 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 go! Uh, hold on, how do you close this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do bouncy balls? Okay. Come on, let's go. Safety first. Step on it. Stop, just go! <laughs> You gotta fight for your right to party! Woo! Woo! Audrey, I just saw four homeless guys outside that said they could really use some Starbucks. Can oh I have gosh. this to give to them? Oh my gosh, yeah, that's terrible. Go ahead. What are you doing? Today, I asked Aiden and Riley to meet me by the back doors. Little did they know, I have my helpful assistance to break their kneecaps. Hey man, why did you ask us here? Oh, I was gonna break your kneecaps? Why? Uh... Uh, so I could have a communist revolution? Why? Why? Uh... Oh. oh. No, Mom, no one knows we're back yet. I've been on the phone with you ever since I got back. Yes, I know I was gone for a whole month. I know, I know. Can you have Joe come and, uh, take, uh, Brady and I home? We don't have our cars. Yeah, okay. Well, tell him to meet us by the back doors, okay? I think Brady's off the phone with his parents. We're gonna walk there now yeah noah smith let us out and he brought us here no yeah the short one yeah i've been waiting for this for a whole week hey what's going on here ah! <laughs> oh. ah! hey what's up man <laughs> Okay, man, I forgive you. Just don't do it again, Brody. You're good. We all have good things. Though my revolution failed, I... I... I still... What did I do? So uh, we're getting ready for Fiddler on the Roof here. Um, I'm the technical director. I get to work with an amazing group of the high schoolers who literally run everything. So we have uh, we've had some fun experiences here with uh, with listening in on who likes who. So the best part about editing the video is I get to find out that so and so liked so and so because they were on a microphone backstage and didn't quite realize who was listening. <laughs> Dude, Alan is ugly. I know, my right? throat. His chin is so freaking yes. greasy. His <laughs> nose is. <laughs> Literally, like, every time I see him, I'm like. Ugh. Exactly. He just, I, whenever he like looks at you, you're like. <laughs> whenever he does the. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. I, I just don't get what's so racist about dressing up as a Mexican. Like, they have a certain culture. It's like. Just, you just Dude, I know. Them. I mean, we're dressing up as Jews right now. I know. And I'm what like, so you're like half it. German. That's like, I know. It's like, a mix of extra bread. I'm not yeah. So, so, so if I want to wear a sombrero and a poncho for Halloween, I don't see what the heck is so wrong with it. I feel you. So, so your microphone is always on. So assume that everybody's listening. So if you have a private conversation, everybody's listening. Yeah, we had a situation that last show. Hey, hey, hey. You, you want to listen to some music? Um, I think we're a little far for that, man. Oh. 
You can just have both. Okay. You like it? Since you're new, Diego, I'm I'm gonna be running sound for this show. I just, you know, it's a really delicate board. I just wouldn't want your inexperienced fingers. You know, the motors on the on the dials. It's just like I don't want you to ruin our expensive equipment. Not that I think you would, you know, break our expensive equipment, but you know, just you're you're newer to the whole like sound and lighting game. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this. For I, this thought, show. I thought the director told me to use this. Well, <laughs> Diego's really picking up really well. I feel like he's learning really fast. I hate her. She's not, she's crazy. Sarah is lunatic. She belongs in an asylum. I feel like, you know, I can really trust him with a lot of the tech responsibilities. Diego. I appreciate Diego. your I appreciate your experience advice. Diego, I'm, but I'm, I'm gonna, pretty sure I'm doing I'm well gonna go right ahead now. and take care of it. Why don't you can so, you can come over here and do do lighting. Lighting is lighting, lighting is it's the easy job. It's for mm. chumps, okay? Mm. Chumps do lighting, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you go ahead and do lighting for me this lighting, time, all right? Yeah, I'm gonna just right. I'm gonna have you do lighting for me this this show, okay? She doesn't belong in the audio and tech room. Even the director says so. That's that's my opinion. Hi, I'm Liberty Dalton. Uh, I play Shandel, Mato's mother, and I'm also a daughter and a Russian guy. Oh, my name is Matthew Calhoun, and I play the rabbi in Fiddler on the Roof. Now, the rabbi, uh, while he is older, he is very a learned man who teaches his son the different traditions in Jewish culture. No. It's not exactly forbidden, but... Maybe some Minecraft coins, and uh, well, she told me she was gonna get me a lot of Beyblades, a lot of really cool launchers, maybe some, one of the special anime stadiums, and like a bunch of cool Pokemon cards. And None of that is true. Aiden, <laughs> give us a countdown in three, two, one. Three, two, one. Mercedes said that she didn't get Zytel. Well, maybe a little. Basically, I just hate Ren. So, because, you know, did she really have to do that? So basically, 
I could, I was, I was like thinking, like, what is the worst form of revenge I could ever get somebody? And the worst thing you could ever do to a person is making them marry Patroff. So, I gave Matthew a document to sign, and I told him it was just for cast book autographs. We don't have a cast book, and we don't do autographs. So, walked up to him and was like, hey, can you sign this? And he did, and he is now a licensed minister in the state of Illinois. So when they ran the scene on closing night, the wedding scene, that was real. I sent my witness statement to the courthouse. They're married. <laughs> I thought Fiddler on the Roof was a fun show. Yeah, um, I mean, Student Council's been doing a really good job uh, planning events and stuff this year, and so it's been really, um, really, really cool to see them. Um, different games. This and is for the, and... um, uh, this is for the theater department. Oh, oh, well, yeah. Um, I, I thought it was great. Uh, I mean, it was one of those where I was very fortunate. I was sitting behind some students who you could tell we're not familiar with the storyline at all and just hearing their reactions throughout the show was uh it was just awesome to see and i appreciated the angst that they were shown in there and i really loved the dancing yeah i saw the show it was good it was good and uh it just goes to show you just how powerful um life performances can be and probably my favorite part was the beards and the glasses um my favorite part of the uh, of the show was probably the uh, the first part. I think. Yeah, the first part. Yeah, I was a little confused by the shotgun and the monkey because I don't remember that being in the original version. So every semester, every single time we complete a show on that Friday night, we always go to Portillo's, and it is so much fun. Bar number three seventy six. You're in the mix. Oh Going to Portillo's is our tradition. Don't put that in. That was plastic. Mmm. <laughs> Okay, so I felt really bad about what I did to Ren and Petrov. So I forged their signatures on some divorce papers. Poor kids. Didn't even last a year. I don't know what it is about Fiddler. I just, I'm really sad that Fiddler's over. I am sad that we aren't going to be performing this anymore. Like, it's just, it's a really good show and you guys have made it such an awesome thing that I just want to keep watching it over and over. Just like that, Hitler was over. On the one hand, it was a fun show. On the other hand, we're tired. Thank you. What do you think about what Henry just said, Leo? I think that he could have done a little bit better. 